Welcome to an immortal Gates of Pyrocast. I'm ZK, and welcome to Break the Game Weekly number 53, where we have Team Ice facing off against Fire. It is now 1-0 for Fire as Santa and Pigeon Wrench took the first game on their opponents. Their opponents, of course, UP as Orzu and Nawel as Ajari. We'll see what they come up with to take the second game. To try and come back in the second game. So far, it doesn't seem like any type of cheese as they both go for the fast expand, but their opponents do as well. It seems to be the current meta of 2v2 where everyone wants to go for that very quick expand. Of course, after that, getting those double E first, so really tech heavy, don't want any map control to begin with. Of course, their opponent doing something extremely similar, although, yeah, extremely similar. So neither of them really going, going for any type of map control in the early game. Equalizing it all with max economy to get those stronger tech heavy armies to do as much damage as they can. Teapot scouting all of that, making sure, making sure their opponents are not cheesing them, but after seeing that expansion, you know that to be the case. And both teams are pretty ready for this. Of course, three of the players decide to play with Croft, the angelic faction with a, with a face, uh, with a face, with a whole angel for a building. On the other side, we have uh, the Aro, the blood tree, the people that have a roaming heart, a, a roaming beating heart at some point once it's uh, the Grove heart evolves to God heart. And yeah, building slowly being constructed. Oh, is there electricity being here? Oh, that's pretty cool. Never noticed that before. Our north side expanding slowly but surely. What type of build are they heading for? Legion Hall going down. Legion Hall as well. I want the full wall off. Last game, what really sunk that is all the harass that came in that killed their worker lines over and over again. They need a better response to it this time. They can't let Santa get away with it like last game. I love the wall they had here. They don't have a choice but to leave an opening, but they'll have to leave a unit there to stop that to stop that from uh, doing as, as much damage as last time. Uh, north side, not much going on. Okay, Reliquary going up, so not going for Fast Dervish. On, oh, he might be going for Fast Dervish. Reliquary unlocks the Magi and Sao Shin, respectively. On the opponent's side, gets Centauri, wants map control for Santa, and heading straight into Soul Foundry to get his favorite unit, the Dervish, as Santa loves to harass all over the map as much as he can. And here you go. Yep, Centauri doing her damage. Yeah, I like this so far. Santa going for this teapot all over the place. Another teapot here, another teapot here. Yeah, just scouting as much as they can. Curious what type of tech they want they're heading for. Uh, Neurosite indicates, Neurosite this building indicates that the altar of the war be heading for some uh, from Zakal, some great early units. Very powerful, great for time push, and here they come. With their upgrade, when their upgrade comes alight, they'll have the white line over them. And they have double attacks for free shots and yeah so very powerful to begin with very strong in the early game as a uh, as our two is very proper for that and for the harass all over the place zephyrs are out and yeah here we go Ooh, dervish are out here comes santa claus going all over the map Both of them comp oh, competing for the power camera at the same time. Let's see who wins this out. And how well goes for in first. However, it's who gets the final kill that gets the power cam. And oh, nice play from Nawel, dodging the last the last symbiote there to get the power cam. And Pigeon has no choice but to retreat. No point in sticking around further. You've seen the early pyre battle those Pigeon already had a 115, and Santa probably use that one. Here come the Dervish. They found a way in. This is horrible for Team Ice. We saw how bad it happened last game. There's still an opening here, so most can run, but so can the Dervish, and yeah, exactly, Dervish should find a way out, get the final load before heading home. Ooh. Can they survive one final shot? And yet he's not able to get that final shot off. Those Dervish come out scot-free. A bit of damage, but they're going to be ready to head pack as soon as they can. Santa, always annoying with those Dervish. Their side, Pigeon denying the pirate camp just a bit, doesn't want it to keep going too long. Behind all this, no one ex expanding too much. We see Santa going for his third base. And yeah, now well, keep going up. Yeah, the map. 
jar is ready to rumble. Oh. Oh no, there's an opening. Poor Santa, Santa found another opening for a Yeti. He thought he had a full wall, but no, those Nervish are in. And his army is out of position, getting surrounded by Team Fire. Fire completes around here. He wind steps out of there, and now well, here to help him save him. But that's a lot of units. The hero comes up, and Yeti was able to save most units. But going up the hill is always a, a tough choice. And wind step forward, there was more units than you expected. Now well, you, now well, losing all his units as Pidgeot perfectly micros here. And that's a great win for, for Fire already. Scepter is out for Santa Claus. Now, well, a big mistake on that blink there. On the other side, on the other side we saw during that push, the, the Dervish were splitting the attention of Ice. And the Dervish got a few kills once more as those bases need to replenish and get the workers back. They want a chance this game. Santa, though, is not done with the harass. He has a Scepter ready to head in. To the north side and do more damage again. What does Nahuel have this time? He does. He has the Angel Army. He can get the unit out to defend this. And all comes down to is it, is it in time though? They can expect this from Santa. They've played Santa before, and Santa is an annoying heck of a guy. And here he comes. The first scepter is in. First damage is coming in. Yupi reacts quickly. Sends out. Sends in the units. Same time. Fire at the back. Defending. Expanding slowly but surely. And Santa yet yeah, finds as much damage as he can. Sees that poor Ether Extractor, the Apostle of Binding, can attack it, he reacts in time, pulls out his Scepter, and wants the kill though. One last shot off, but is it worth it? He lo Ooh, Apostle of Binding for one, for one, uh, for one Scepter that can stay there and keep harassing. It's a dangerous trio, it's a dangerous trade, and those Dervish have to be careful as they still have an entrance here if uh, Santa remi remembers it. Eddie though, on the other side. Getting as much damage as he can. The scepter is still here, and Dervish caught out, but no, he skims and, sta and dances around them, finding another way around. And here come the scepters and the, uh, and the howler. We play once more. Okay, let's see what he come up with. That big attack coming in. Okay, Team Ice have all their whole army together. Pigeon Wrench is alone, going up the hill. And pull back micro from UP. Doesn't want to lose any of his effort. <laughs> and win step forward from now well. And now they have the low ground advantage. But Pigeon doesn't think he can take it. He heads back to his tower. The tower is a great unit of defense. And, and takes a few kills here. The battle is ongoing. On the other side, Santa sending back his units to help his ally as there's a foe surround coming in right now. Now, well, poked his opponent out of danger, but Yeti is already out, and now well has no choice but to retreat as well. And no, yeah, now well, this is dangerous. Don't lose those units for nothing. And Yeti has to help his ally, jumps in, but the damage has been dealt. Pigeon takes a great fight there. Team Ice is not to be not to be mentioned. There's a first howler out for Santa. Our way of doing that heavy damage from afar. And the Zephyrs, again, inside the base. The Dervish doing as much as they can, and he's hidden here. If they can. But Yeti, but Ice is routed at this point. Want to get the power, to get the power, and then head out. Everyone has so much power, especially now, well, with 200. What is he saving it for? And here comes the next push. The Hallowers doing damage to the back. And get another... And get another Zephyr there. This is so much damage for them. What can they do next? And here they come, the push is still ongoing. Oh man. Man, Yeti and Nawel are in big trouble at this point. Okay, there's a nice concave for Ice at this point. Uh, that's good for them, they want that concave. Same time. Same time, they're still only on two bases. Yeti trying to get that third base up on the corner, but Team Fire getting the resonance out as well. So much zone control for a fire. And here comes the pillar from UP. This is it. This is how they want to take care of this. They're jumping into their opponents. That's a lot of scepters already set up. Heaven's Age is coming down, giving 40 shields to everything. A pillar comes down for Team Fire. Rain of blood, everything going up. But Team Ice has to retreat. Fire had too many units there. And Ice are routed once more. What do they have left? They have the Sharu. But that fight did not go in their favor. And Fire has so many units at this point. But of course, going through a choke point is always dangerous. They, 
Santa tries, but thinks back on it, heading back for that base instead. And here come the Char as well. Char doing their best. And Pigeon going for a counterattack on the other side. It might be too little too late as they try to do their damage, but it won't be enough. And yeah, that's a, nice, that's a nice attack. Dual prong from both sides. And the Shadow come in. Shadow do immense damage, killing so many mass hunters. They need to get out of that fire, that, that heaven's ages of fire. As the Halloros from the back getting shot down by those mass hunters. And that's going to be GG. Team Fire takes a 2-0. Congrats to Pidget and Santa for making the finals. They break the game.